In this video, we'll be taking a look at one NFL game happening on September 28, 2023, and providing you with a free team pick and total pick for this game. So two picks in total. Welcome back to Cash Out Sports. Let's dive right into it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell icon to get notified as soon as these videos get released so that you have more time to plan out your bets as we provide these videos on a daily basis. I can guarantee that you'll have all the important information that you'll need on this one NFL game after fully watching watching this video. One more thing before we start, if you would like to gain access to our best exclusive sports picks to take your journey to the next level, then check out our Patreon in the link down below where we offer our best single picks, parlay picks, and much more. Now let's get started. Detroit Lions vs. Green Bay Packers Week 4 of the NFL season kicks off with a battle of old National Football Conference North rivals on the gridiron as they tangle on the not-so-frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. The Detroit Lions are on the road as they make the trip to face the Green Bay Packers on Thursday night football. Detroit comes in off a 20-6 home victory over Atlanta in their previous game Sunday afternoon, covering the line as a three-point favorite. Green Bay rallied late to earn an 18-17 home win over New Orleans Sunday afternoon, winning outright as a one-point underdog when the books closed. In the all-time regular season series between the teams, the Packers own a 103-75-7 advantage, but the Lions have won the last three meetings. That includes a 20-16 road win in the most recent matchup on January 8th. The Lions drafted tight end Sam Laporta with the 34th pick of the most recent NFL draft. He is the first NFL tight end to have five catches in each of his first two games, and his 18 catches through three games is also the most ever by a tight end. Quarterback Jared Goff praised Laporta's recent performance after the game. Goff has been solid in the Lions' 2-1 start. He has completed 69.9% of his passes for 273 passing yards per game, with five touchdowns and two interceptions. Goff does not run the ball often, but did have a three-yard design run for a touchdown against Atlanta. Laporta is having an excellent start for a rookie tight end, but veteran receiver Amon Rossent. Brown is putting up even bigger numbers. Through three games, and Brown has 21 catches for 275 yards and a touchdown. Running back David Montgomery sat out last week's game with a thigh injury, allowing rookie Jomer Gibbs to step in with 80 yards on 17 carries against Atlanta. Detroit's defense stepped up against Atlanta. They did not allow any touchdowns and sacked Desmond Ritter seven times in the game. Defensive end Aiden Hutchinson had two of those sacks after not having any in his first two games. Cornerback Jerry Jacobs is leading the team in tackles with 20 on the season. The Lions only have one interception thus far on the season, coming from safety Brian Branch in the opener against Kansas City. In the history of the Green Bay Packers, they have never come back from being down 17 in the fourth quarter to win a game until last week. Jordan Love led the comeback for the Packers, who went on an 18-minute zero run to win the game. Head coach Matt LaFleur perfectly executed the analytic move of going for two when you score a touchdown down 14. This allowed Green Bay to go up one on their final touchdown of the game and hold on as the Saints missed a game-winning field goal late in the fourth. The Packers were short-handed at skill positions with Aaron Jones and Christian Watson still out with injuries. Jordan Love threw for 259 yards, but only completed 50% of his passes on the day. Love has been limiting big mistakes. He threw his first interception against the Saints and has a 7-to-1 touchdown interception ratio on the year. The Pack have struggled to get their running game going. Love led the team in rushing last week, and their leading rusher on the season is A.J. Dillon with only 107 yards through three games. Young receivers J. Jaden Reed and Romeo Dubs have stepped up while waiting for Watson to return. The Packers had their best defensive effort of the season last week. They did not allow any second-half points to the Saints, though it is worth nothing that Derek Carr left the game with an injury and Jamez Winston finished the game at quarterback. Linebacker Key Walker leads the team in tackles with 28. Linebacker Ration Gary is up to 3.5 sacks on the year and the Packers have just two interceptions through three games. The Lions coach is a master motivator who is an expert at getting his teams ready for pivotal games. Given how both teams have performed this season, this Thursday figures to be critical in deciding the division, and I suspect Campbell will treat it like that in practice this week. Campbell has had great success against the Packers since taking over in Detroit with a 3-1 record against the Lions' bitter rivals. Jordan Love has shown flashes and engineered an epic comeback last Sunday, 
but the Saints were up 17-0 last week before Derek Carr left the game. His numbers look good on paper, but a good chunk of his production came against the lowly Bears. Detroit's defense is vastly improved and should bring the first-year starter back down to earth. It's also a short week and the Packers are really banged up. Jer Alexander, David Backshire, Zane Anderson, Christian Watson and Elgton Jenkins all have missed at least some practice time this week. The Packers' recipe for winning does not seem sustainable, while the Lions look like they could take the division title. Green Bay had an exciting comeback, but Love only hit 50% of his passes. No Packer ran for more than 40 yards, and they were playing against a backup quarterback at home. Everything fell in line perfectly for Green Bay. That will not happen against Detroit. The Packers' skill players are still decimated by injuries, and the Lions' defense is greatly improved. Aiden Hutchinson came alive last week with two sacks and will put pressure on Love all game. The Lions' offense has been humming. Goff has established chemistry with Laporta and Sint. Brown early and rookie running back Gibbs looks like the real deal. Green Bay was fortunate to escape with the win over the Saints, though the game shifted when Derek Carr was injured on a ration Gary sack in the second half. The Packers now have to contend with a Lions team that has beaten them three straight times, including their Week 18 triumph last season that kept Green Bay out of the playoffs. It Detroit has looked good offensively in their first three games as Goff has continued to click with his receivers. The addition of Laporta as a pass receiving threat at the tight end position gives Detroit a threat they previously lacked. Green Bay may be healthier this week, but time will tell on that front. The Packers were unimpressive for the majority of their game against the Saints and it's tough to have faith in them slowing down a Detroit team that has been solid this season. I consider the Green Bay Packers at home and the free point because I love my home teams and my dogs on Thursday, where teams don't have much time to prepare and games are often sloppy. However, the Lions have been more impressive through three games, and they're balanced offensively. The Packers have been in back-to-back -back dogfights, and the fact they can't run the ball or stop the run is concerning. The Packers are 26th in rush offense and 28th in rush defense. The Lions have won three straight games against the Packers. Green Bay had a lot of lucky bounces go their way to beat the Saints. The same will not happen again as the Lions have more big play potential and will outpace the Packers on the road. The Lions haven't won the National Football Conference North since 1993. I know that. You know that. Dan Campbell knows that. If his players don't know that, they will buy game time. 20-year streaks are hard to break, but I think Jared Goff and the Lions find a way to get the win at Lambeau on primetime. This version of Green Bay just isn't whole. It all sets up to be a Lions spot, so the Detroit Lions to win and cover the spread as favorites is our full game side pick. Detroit enters this game having seen the under post a 2 to 1 mark in their three games this season. The Lions stayed under the number in their lone road contest, totaling 41 points against a number of 52 and a half points in their season opening win over the Chiefs. In their two home games, Detroit went over the total in the loss to the Seahawks before staying under against Atlanta Sunday. Green Bay went over the number in two of their first three games to start the 2023 campaign. The Packers and Bears combined for 58 points against a number of 41 before totaling 49 points in the loss to the Falcons in Week 2. Last week against the Saints, the teams combined for 35 points to stay under the number of 41 and a half points. Both meetings last season fell short of the number, as have six of the last nine meetings. This is a crucially important divisional game that very well could decide the direction of the National Football Conference North. Oh, and it's on a short week. It's a small sample, but Thursday night football games have gone under 45 in two of three weeks this year. Of course, participating teams matter, but it's still a short week of recuperation and preparation. And in such an unforgiving and physical sport, there's no doubt that production suffers on that Thursday night game. We know Dan Campbell will be aggressive in spots. That's true in every game. But I think this is one where, from Detroit's perspective, they'll ask Jared Goff to rely on safe throws and lean on their running game with Jammer Gibbs. The same is true of Green Bay, who likely won't have their top pass catcher in Christian Watson. It's unclear if either star running back Aaron Jones or offensive tackle David Backshire will suit up, which will make it much more difficult to score on a Detroit defense that held Patrick Mahomes to 226 yards in Week 1. Add in the fact that Detroit sacked Desmond Ritter seven times last week, and this just has the feel of a knockdown, drag-out, defense-oriented game. I see this as a lower possession game where both Goff and Love try to protect the ball with each team trying to do just enough to wrest control of the division. Look for this game to wind up falling short of the total as both teams leave points on the field. I just don't see this as a shootout. Under the projected total is our full game total pick.
That's all for now, so if you have any other games you would like reviewed, then leave a comment down below with the game you would like analyzed, subscribe to our channel, leave a like on this video, and we'll get to it as soon as we possibly can. We would also love to hear your opinion on the picks presented to you in this video, whether you agree or disagree with them, so leave a comment down below and do let us know.